All right, well, we have our coffee, we have the internet, and I think we're ready to party. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new tool that NZXT just rolled out and is going to make your life easier if you're not caught up on what current hardware is out and what's going to be best for the games that you like to play. What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Joe's Tech. So today we're going to be taking a look at NZXT's build service that they just started providing a couple days ago. Uh, basically what this is, is it's a service that allows you to go online, put in a few titles that you might be interested in playing, and then of course a price point, and maybe pick out a case or a color of a case, and they'll go ahead and provide you with several build options. You see what I did there? But for now, why don't we go ahead and take a look at what they have on the site, and see uh, you know what's involved in building a computer with build. Alright guys, so let's start things off at the homepage of the build service, which is nzxt.com slash BLD now. Um, as you can see here on the page, um, it's kind of just a quick rundown on how this process works. Um, they offer a two-year warranty with all these shipments, free shipping of course, and uh, I, I'm assuming this basically means that they are stress testing and making sure everything works before they send it to you. And obviously you get a pretty quick turn time, which is pretty cool as well. You're selecting three games, um, and then they're going to provide you with uh, several options to build your PC with, uh, obviously, a custom configuration, which, just like uh, if you were to build a PC yourself, fully upgradable, and that's about it. So let's get this process started. Uh, here again, it's just saying select your games, estimate how much you want to spend, and then you can customize towards the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to pick a couple games that I would play myself, which obviously Overwatch is pretty common and I don't typically play that, but uh, we'll put it in there. Diablo 3, haven't played this one in a long time, but always a fave. Battlefield 1, definitely played this more recently, but out of all of these, those are probably the most, uh, the three closest ones that I would be playing. So let's go ahead and get an estimate going. I'm going to go middle of the pack here and say I would spend $2,000 on a PC. Now at this point in the build process, it's pretty cool, they'll actually break down each game, you know, what the FPS you could potentially um, achieve, and then of course they leave their notes here, benchmarked at 1920 by 1080 and at epic FPS settings, so game should be run at least 60 frames per second, uh, let's see several games of VSync on so this is just going to give you an estimate on how many frames per second you're going to get with this build at whichever designated resolution which it says 1920 by 1080 and epic epic FPS settings so and I think that's going to be the same for all three of these 1920 by 1080 so obviously it would be nice if there was an option here to see if these PCs were capable of 1440 gaming, uh, maybe at a later date they'll have that option, but uh, anyways, carry on. So, this is the first build that they recommend, it looks like. Obviously it comes in an NZXT case, which is the S340, and uh, they, they selected an i5-7600, which is obviously a pretty good CPU uh, for, I would say, mid-range uh, gaming PCs. And then they go straight for that 1080. So the majority of the workload here is going to be on the 1080 and obviously this is pretty sufficient, especially for these games which are not very intensive. So included they do add the RAM storage um, and it looks like 16 gigs of RAM. So the thing that's nice here is let's say you wanted to step it up from here or maybe just see what, what the extra um, added cost would give you. So you can actually go down the list here and look at each item and uh, see why they're adding a cost here. So it looks like we got to increase uh, storage size from 275 to 525 gigs on the SSD. In addition to that, um, it looks like we are running the same CPU. i5-7600, i5-7600, still the 1080 for the win with the gaming ACX. So on this one, it's pretty much just gonna be storage, right? Increased storage. From there, obviously you get increased storage and you get the data drive. You're still looking at, I believe, the same RAM, same CPU, same graphics card. And from there, 
we start looking at, uh, I believe, let's see, more memory. No, no, you are not. You are looking at exactly the same. Push on next 300. So I'm missing something obvious here. Maybe it is a power supply or something else. But uh, it looks like all the core components are the same between those two items there. Um, and of course from here then you're going to end up going with a faster RAM. So basically as you go up you can see they just bump up the hardware little by little. Now we're getting into i7 builds as we get higher and higher. The last one was an i5 at $2,069. But it's kind of nice that they give you these options and you can kind of see which hardware pairs best. So let's go back up and get to our budget price which was 2000 so this is it looks like it's gonna be the best that we're gonna get we'll have that extra storage there so let's configure this one here so this is where it gets kind of cool you can actually go in and manually adjust things as you please so let's say you don't want just the standard s340 but you want that tempered glass side s340 elite you can kind of see what you're getting there um, and looks like we have some upgrades some upgrades as well. Um, if you wanted to add the Air RGB fans, you could do that. You could add three of those, um, or Hue Plus has, is added. Oh, well, perfect. So you can't even add the RGB fans unless you get the Hue Plus, which is obviously required. So that's cool that they thought of that stuff as well. Um, in addition to that, I believe we can actually go down the line here and see exactly which board that they're providing. So at this point, this is where it would come in handy for those of you who maybe aren't sure what hardware to start with to begin with. This will give you a rundown of the boards and you know components that are compatible and then you can go do your research from here as far as you know why why maybe the Strix Z270E gaming board is worth that extra $30 over the Asus Prime. Is it really worth it? Um, and you know at that point you can go, go and do that research independently and find out what's going to be best for you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously the GPU is a big one, right? Everybody wants to kind of see what the options are there and they've done a great job at allowing you to either add a little bit to your budget to step it up or you know, cut a little bit if you need to to um, save money and still get the build that you want. And obviously you kind of get a rundown here of what generally what your you know components look like, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously if I was gonna do this, I would probably want to go with the i7 so I could get the most performance for editing. Obviously, um, for those of you who don't do that, that's not really critical, but um, now I'm over my $2,000 budget so I can again go back and cut back a little bit here. Maybe I'll step down to the 1070 and maybe I'll decide that, um, let's see here. So now that we're pretty close to what, what budget we were hoping to get to, um, let's go ahead and drop off maybe all of these RGB fans which aren't really necessary. Maybe we'll add two of the RGB 120s just because, right, we can put one in the back and one in the top of the case. And I think that that is going to be it. Obviously the nice thing here too, under the options tab, you can change your case as well which I think we kind of went over for a quick second there. Um, so from there, I think we're pretty much done. You can customize, you can change uh, to a different colored case if that's what you'd rather do. Uh, so we'll just stick with the standard black case. Now you know, let's go blue, let's go blue. Um, within the extra section, you can select your you know puck if you want to add your little cable management headset holder there. Obviously the USB hub, if you were planning to add multiple uh, USB devices later, like a Kraken uh, or multiple Krakens or RGB goodies, um, you're gonna wanna add that. We obviously already have our Q+. The NZXT Grid version two is their smart fan controller. So it's pretty cool that they let you add all this stuff in there. Um, if you, I guess, wanted to bump it up to Windows 10 Pro, you pay 20 bucks. And I think that is it, guys. So once you go to the Buy Now section, you can see all of the equipment that you've selected for your build. Um, the only thing that I would say is questionable is 
this 500 watt power supply. I believe this should be fine. Obviously, keep in mind whenever you're doing a build like this, if you have uh, any plans to add on secondary graphics down the road, you wanna make sure that you get a big enough power supply so you don't have to buy two power supplies, obviously to replace the original. Um, but aside from that, that's pretty much it. And that is how easy it is to build your own PC and order it through NZXT using the build service. So I thought this was kind of a cool utility for you guys to use or see, even if you're not planning to order a PC through NZXT, but uh, you know, I really think they went above and beyond kind of creating this tool, uh, depending on how accurate the, the FPS ratings are, of course. But uh, I think it was a great idea that they put this utility together. Obviously allows more people that maybe aren't confident in their uh, ability to build PCs or you know, somebody that maybe is a first time PC gamer that wants to kind of dabble into the, you know, the realm of PC gaming. I think this is a great idea and it kind of helps the community continue to grow. So uh, kudos to them. So I am kind of curious to see what the use case is going to be for this site. You know, is it going to be just people who are interested in building a PC or is it going to be somebody that, uh, you know, maybe wants to get an idea of what components will work together? Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments section below. Would you guys actually use this if you were planning to build a PC or are you one of those people that really likes to just kind of do the research and find out what the best of the best is uh, or, you know, the best for your use case scenario? So if you guys could let me know in the comment section below, that'd be great. Of course, if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up on the way out. I've got some really exciting stuff coming up in the next few weeks. If you guys want to stick around and see what that is going to look like, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.